Budget session 2015 began on the 23rd of February and ended on the 20th of March. As Parliament met for the first time this New Year, the session began with the President's address. The President's address highlighted the achievements of the government in the past nine months and also laid down the policy and legislative framework. The Union Minister for Railways, Suresh Prabhu, presented the Railways Budget on the 26th of February and the Union Minister of Finance, Arun Jaitley, presented the Union Budget on the 28th of February. In addition to this, in the last two months, six ordinances were promulgated by the government. Of this, five were passed. The Land Acquisition Bill was passed in the Lok Sabha and is currently pending in the Rajya Sabha. In this context, a bill to replace uh, the Land Acquisition Ordinance of 2014 was introduced in the Lok Sabha. The bill makes a few changes to the Land Acquisition Act of 2013. So, for example, the requirement of obtaining the consent of landowners and conducting a social impact assessment uh, is waived for five types of projects. These include uh, defence, rural infrastructure, industrial corridors, affordable housing and infrastructure. This bill was passed by the Lok Sabha with a few changes. For example, um, the definition of industrial co corridors was clarified. Uh, secondly, when uh, an award is made to a family of displaced person, it was specified that this include employment for one member of a family of farm laborers. The five remaining ordinances that were passed in both houses of parliament relate to coal, mines, motor vehicles, insurance and citizenship. In September 2014, the Supreme Court cancelled the allocation of 204 coal blocks. Following the Supreme Court's judgment, the government promulgated the Coal Mine Special Provisions Ordinance to allocate these cancelled mines. The ordinance provides for the process of auction of these cancelled mines and the process of transfer of these mines to successful bidders. The government also promulgated the Mines and Minerals Ordinance. The ordinance provides for the auction of minerals such as iron ore, bauxite and manganese among others. It also extends the lease of existing lease holders and creates bodies such as the District Mineral Foundation, which would work towards the benefit of mining affected communities. Both these bills were sent to the select committees in the Upper House. The select committees submitted their reports on the 18th of March, and both the bills were then passed by Rajya Sabha on the last day before session broke for recess. In July 2014, the Delhi High Court banned the plying of e rickshaws as they were not regulated under any law. Following this, the government promulgated the Motor Vehicles Amendment Ordinance to bring e-carts and e-rickshaws under the ambit of the Motor Vehicles Act of 1988. The ordinance provides for the central government to make rules with regards to specifications for e-carts and e-rickshaws and it also provides for the manner of issuing uh, driving licenses. The insurance bill was also passed by both Houses of Parliament in this session. Among other things, the bill raises the cap of foreign investment in Indian insurance companies to 49%. Also, as mentioned in the budget speech, a bill related to the regulation and taxation of undisclosed foreign income and assets, also referred to as black money, was introduced in Lok Sabha on the last day of session before the House broke for recess. The Juvenile Justice Bill that is pending in Parliament had been sent to the Standing Committee for its scrutiny. The Standing Committee, in its report, questioned data that states that there has been an increase in heinous crimes being committed by 16 to 18 year olds. Under the bill, 16 to 18 year olds committing heinous offences may be tried as adults. The committee did not agree with children being subjected to the adult criminal justice system and highlighted that this provision violates the Constitution. In terms of productivity, both Houses of Parliament performed well. It was seen that the productivity of Lok Sabha was 121% and that of Rajya Sabha was 108%. In terms of question hour, there were few disruptions in both Houses. Lok Sabha performed at 88% and Rajya Sabha at 98%. For more information, please visit our website at www.prsindia.org.